Well, here we are in Putnam County, Medal of Honor Day, and this is the first parade for the Medal of Honor recipients in America, and there'll be a couple of them here. In fact, I just spoke to Paul Bucher, one of the most famous uh, Medal of Honor winners from the uh, Vietnam War, and uh, he and I were in a race, a congressional race together when Ham Fish died in the district uh, that was just above my old district. And here they were just uh, swearing in some new uh, recruits. And this is the staging area. In fact, I'm going to get out of the car now just to give you a feel because we're starting to starting to uh, assemble. You got Army, Police, Fire Department trucks back there. And here's the beautiful car I bought when I was, uh, let me close this door here, when I was only 25. And it's just great for a parade on a good day, convertible, and people could sit up there. I even brought some cushions to sit on. So I'm not involved in this ceremony, so I'll let that ceremony go before I pull the car up. But you can see all the people came here to respect the people who are veterans and certainly those that are Medal of Honor winners, like Mr. O'Malley who's with us, and Buka, and maybe a few more will show up. Uh, Brother Dick moved the car up to the front. We're kind of assembling right now. We get this nice POW MIA recognition day. Join us to Hawthorne Post. Great. Paul Book is back there. I just had a nice conversation with him. Hey, Rich. This is nice. I'm just trying to get organized. Over Thank here. you for facilitating this beautiful day. Everything's on time, and I think we're going to have a great time. And I'll try to get even Paul Buka to say a few words for us here. And he wants to meet and get involved if we do this. You and he look like your, your brothers over there. Long, it's you amazing. You haven't lost a beat. Yeah, Hi. and he's still very active. How you doing? Hey, how are you, sir? Good. We need to see. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Where nice. the country begins. Good yeah. to see yes. you, sir. Right, Richard, great. Nice to meet you. Well, we're just getting ready, but I wanted to see how nicely identified we are now because uh, Brother Dick here and Peter Fumfredo made sure that they'd recognize who's in the car here. This is going to look good on a nice film. Thank you, Peter. That's going to look really nice. You may be involved in a new one with me, you know? Is there's a 10th medal coming down, Seaman Dory Miller, Which White one? House. Seaman Dory Miller, World War II, Pearl Harbor. Wow, you don't have to need a wheelchair or, or a... <laughs> No, it's, it's already forming. Waco, Texas has raised two million bucks for his memorial, and they want me to come to speak, and I'm gonna speak in front of the Black Congressional Caucus September 14th. Thank you, Rich. Hey. Nice to have the family together, that 718 Tremont Avenue team. This is the Medal of Honor Parade, Putnam County. This is great. Important people come to see you and say hello. And here's Mary Edwards. Now you're here because you said your husband is. My husband is, is um, with the Vietnam Veterans of America. He's on the board. Ah, great. Uh, is that a chapter here in New York? Yes, White Plains, chapter 49. White Plains, sure. I'm, I'm yes. a member of that, lifetime Are you? member. With uh, who's the guy that's Dan the Griffin. Fa Dan, yeah. Dan Griffin. One of the most famous uh, veterans from Vietnam. Yeah, when I ran for Congress, uh, he was very supportive. He, yeah, he's involved in everything. Yeah. We're also involved in honor flights. I'm trying to get him signed up for honor flight. Yeah. I'm going to run up We're to gonna the do car that. and get my... Over 30 years, I was able to get nine medals of honor for black war heroes, World War I, World War II, because of segregation, even though 200 were recommended by the commanding officers, nothing was done. The life started with Mickey Leland, who died two years later, the head of the Black Caucus, delivering food to Ethiopia, believe it or not. And I carried this on pretty much since 1989, when he died, in his memory. And we're hoping to get one more, Seaman Dory Miller. Uh, and hopefully it will be done in time for Pearl Harbor. That's where he did his heroic act. Uh, so with that, this is nice to be here. Thank you for arranging it, Rich. The whole family You're will welcome. enjoy this. Well, we finally got started here. Rich is doing the honors. He's driving, and I'm right here. And you can see me sitting in the back. <laughs> and there's the parade in back of me. But... That's the county executive, Mrs. Uh, I think Mary Ellen O'Dell, her name is, uh, right in front of us. And then Paul Buka, a very famous Medal of Honor winner, is marching up there. And we're going to the center of town. Uh, the town is Carmel, 
Rich? Yes. See ya. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it looks like we're getting to the middle of town here now. How you doing, everybody? Thank you. Good to see you. Really nice. How are you? And this is... This is Lake Lehad, you said? G-L-E-A... Glen Oneida, very nice. Good to see you all. How you doing? Taking pictures of each other. How you doing? People are saying. How you doing, everybody? Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Good to see you. Wonderful day, isn't it? Beautiful. Thank now we're getting to the heart of the parade, a lot of people. Good to see you all. Hello, how you doing? How are you? Good. Terrific. Good to see you all. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Very nice. nice. Good to see you. Great day for America, Putnam County. Yeah. How you doing? How you doing? Hello, everybody. Hey, hey all right. Thanks for coming. And I kept it. How you doing? Good to see you all. Nice. Now oh, look it up there. Very nice. There's the Putnam County Courthouse. Beautiful. Yeah. Look at that. Beautiful. Elected officials from throughout the area, led by County Executive Mary Ellen O'Dell. Good to see you. Now, where are we going? That's Rita Cosby and Paul Booker. Mr. O'Malley. Texas, right? Yep. Where are you from, originally? Texas? Woodside. Let me get a Queens. good shot of that. Woodside, metal, uh, Queens. But what are you, this is the Navy, yeah. Coast Guard, and Marine Corps one. It's Minerva Warding off Eagle. Great. And uh, you're from Queens, but what is the Texas? You said something about Texas last no, night. No, I've been residing down Texas. The wife is a Texan. Ah, I I'm see. I'm a Woodside boy, a bar in every corner. I'm down there. It's a dry county for the past 33 years. I'd like to thank the chairman of this parade, Mr. Phil McArdle. Where is Phil? This parade today is all because of the toil, sweat, and tears of a fine man, Phil McArdle. Phil did a tour with the U.S. Coast Guard. He worked in Ladder 58 in the Bronx, Hazmat, Urban Search and the Rescue Team, and FEMA during the events of 9-11. He lost 18 members of his firehouse on that horrible day. And Phil, we want to thank you for continuing your service to our nation and to our veterans. Uh, Mary Ellen didn't know about this, but I wanted to actually present her we had two Medal of Honor winners from Putnam County. One was a guy named William J. Brewer, who won uh, the Medal during the Civil War. And he was the first Medal of Honor recipient from Putnam County. So what we've done is we were able to get a replica of his medal for Mary Ellen. Uh, share this with everyone, with all of you. Thank you so much, Phil. I would like to present to our Medal of Honor recipients, and uh, if any of the members of the legislature can scoot their way over here, they could join me in this presentation. As I did for Phil McArdle, we will do today for Mr. Paul Buca, the Medal of Honor recipient, United States Army, Vietnam. Each time the row of honor is displayed, Paul, we will have one on your behalf. Yeah. And where's my buddy Bobby? There he is. Here's to the city at <laughs> Bob, every time the row of honor is displayed, there will be a flag in your honor. And we thank you, sir, so very much. And as the county 
executive, I'm going to make it an executive order right now. Traditionally, you know, we put the row of honor up for Memorial Day, and then we take it down, and we put them back up for Veterans Day. This year, in honor of our Medal of Honor recipients, those flags will fly continuously through the summer and through the month of November wow. in honor of all who serve. Yeah. With that, I'd like to bring the microphone back to Mr. Eric Rose. Thank you all very much. God bless America. Thank you for allowing me to be the county executive of the county I love so very much. Rita Cosby is the founder of the New York State Medal of Honor Committee. She's going to be telling us now about the Medal of Honor. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, first of all, I just want to say how fantastic, beautiful, sunny day. And to see the first Medal of Honor Day in the state of New York, the first parade for the Medal of Honor Day ever, and to be in Carmel, how fantastic is that? I want to thank um, Phil, my dear friend, of course, Pete Fumafredo. We call him Smokin'. Um, and of course, um, the county executive. And I think of so many of all of us, and the former congressman, we think of so many of us who have been on this incredible journey. I have been so honored to be part of the committee. I can't believe it's been 10 years now. Um, and to have the very first Medal of Honor parade here is absolutely incredible. Um, I implore Governor Cuomo to sign the bill to make sure that the first Medal of Honor Day parade in the state of New York, July 25th, that it starts this year and it continues every year here out. It has been signed, by the way, uh, by both branches of the New York legislature. It is hopefully just a passing thing that we're waiting for the governor's signature. So I implore all of you and everybody, I'm doing something unorthodox for a journalist, but I'm an American first. And I am begging the governor and everybody to make sure that they sign it. Because it has to be Medal of Honor Day this July 25th and every July 25th from here on out. So I hope it happens very, very soon, everybody. Well, the time we've all been waiting for to hear from the Medal of Honor recipients. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Paul Buca. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of the men I had the privilege of serving with, I thank you for that. Um, I was asked why I'm not wearing my medal. Whenever I go somewhere to speak, uh, in this day and age, you never know when someone might construe what I say to be politically motivated. And as a result, if that's true, because I have 10 men on a very black, shiny wall in Washington whose beliefs I'm not privy to, I don't want anyone to confuse the medal they as well as I wear um, with others. And so as a result of that, I wore the rosette, which we're allowed to wear in civilian clothes, and did not bring the medal out of deference and also honor to the men on that wall in Washington. Thank you. It's hot, and so I'm going to try to make this short and but to the point. I've had a campaign of late, uh, and wherever I go, I try to remind people, no more thank you for your service. That's gotten too easy. I met a sergeant from Afghanistan who turned around and yelled at a man who said, thank you for your service. He said, you don't know me. Why are you thanking me? I said, take it easy. It's all right. I too have PTS. We can live with this. And he said, what should I do? I said, just tell them thank you. And now I would like to share some thoughts with you. When you go through life, there are only some things we have that are valuable. Many people say, oh, it's the money that I share and give. No, you just wrote a check. Anybody can write a check. It depends on how big the check is, and that's not even relevant because that which you're giving of is something that's not finite. We all make money. We all lose money. We make more money. Again, it's never finite. 
My wife would say, well, let's give them stuff. Let's, all the hallways, let's get rid of it. I said, no, that's also something that's not finite. We have one thing in our lives that's finite. And that is our time. And when you see these kids in an airport, looking up at that wall, that's got all these three letters, and next to it all kinds of numbers. Remember, many of these young men and women have never been in an airport before. They took military flights across the ocean. And we turn them loose and they say, go catch your plane, go home, it's important. And they stand in front of that thing looking for Ducktown, Tennessee. Because that's where dinner is. But there's no Ducktown, Tennessee. But when they walk into that room, according to Budweiser, everybody stands up for 13 seconds and applause. No one says, are you okay? No one says, can I help you? They may say, I just can't find Ducktown, Tennessee up there. And mom's making a dinner. And if I miss it, it would be terrible. She's been working so hard. And my uncles and everybody are coming to welcome me home. i got to get there. And all you have to do is say, let me see your ticket. So you're really going to Nashville, Tennessee. Why? That's the closest airport to Ducktown, Tennessee. You're all right. You've got this. But follow me. I'm going to take you to gate 26. When you get to gate 26, I want to talk to the flight attendant. And you ask the flight attendant, can you take care of this young man or this young lady? They're coming home to the most important dinner of their lives. Please take care of them. And the flight attendants, as is their habit, will do so. They take the military and take care of them for us as they make that flight home. And the lesson to all of us is, when you see a soldier, Marine, Air Force, Coast Guards, Sailor, don't let it go to thank you for your service. You can say thank you for your service, but ask them, where are you from? If they don't want to talk to you, they'll tell you. But they may need someone to talk to because at the end of it, they're going to ask you, I need help. And that's embarrassing, they might feel. But it shouldn't be. It should be a message of hope from us to them. So when you see these kids in uniform, Walk up to them and say, thank you. Where are you from? Can I help? Is there anything I can do for you? And when they say yes, do it. Don't run away from it. They are entitled to our support without asking for it. It is up to us to volunteer it. And when you're done, you will go to that special place and you will think of what you just did, and it will move you to your soul. The young men and women and their families who wear the uniform of this great country are entitled to all we can do for them, all that we can do for them. And I would ask you, If we can do that, if we can teach each other to talk with civility to each other, just think how wonderful it would be if we treated each other the way I'm suggesting we treat them. We need to come together as a country. Time is over for calling each other names. We have among us those who have worn the uniform, young and old, who can inspire us with their service and inspire us with their integrity. And most important, inspire us with all that they represent. And that is what we honor today. God bless you all. Thank you for having me. Well, that concludes our ceremony, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you so much for joining us. There are refreshments and activities taking place behind the courthouse. Stop by, say hello, and as Paul said, say hello to a veteran.
another good veteran over here. So many great stories. No crying. We're looking for you.